Check, check. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Nice and quiet. Yes. Lovely. Welcome to pit 3, 4, 61, and 67. That's right, this was at one time four different pits, excavation sites is what I'm talking about. And these were dug during the 1913 to 1915 excavation. So, uh, it, and the numbers just come from the sequence in which they were dug. So they came around, they dug three and four, and then they came back around and dug 61 and 67. Again, they dug about 100 pits during that, that 1913 to 1915 excavation there. And not all of those pits had fossils in them, but the ones here did have fossils. And those fossils date from a range of about 40,000 years old to about 15,000 years old. So we're finding quite a range of fossils in these seeps here. Um, and we know that the ages now because we were able to radiocarbon date these bones, um, but it's all with calibration, so we have to kind of off offset those numbers. Um, but in order to really understand how these animals were getting stuck, um, this is a great place to do it. This is much more indicative of what those animals were encountering. No one was really sinking, no one, no animal was really sinking into these uh, asphalt seeps. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't like uh, quicksand or anything like that. It's much more like flypaper. So in order for you to get the uh, entire, you know, the feeling of what was happening, these entrapment events, I'm wondering if I can have a volunteer or two. Yeah, you want to come on up? Yep. And would you like to be a predator or a prey? You don't care? Okay. Um, you're going to be a predator for sure because I always like to be the prey. So if we can go back, everyone, go back 14,000 years. And I'm taking off my educator hat and I am putting on my acting cap. And I'm no longer Hannah the educator, I am now Hannah the baby mastodon. And I'm roaming this area looking for some water and some shade. What's your name? Tessa. Tessa. Thanks, Tessa. She's rad. Woo! Tessa. Um, Tessa is a... Tessa is a saber tooth cat. She's no longer Tessa the young lady. She is Tessa the saber tooth cat. And as I am looking for water and things like this, I, I stumble upon this lovely area with sycamores and some oak trees, possibly. And uh, there's water covering this, uh, whatever this is behind me here, a little pond. And as I step in to lower my trunk, the water tastes a little funny, but I'm fine until I try and get back out. And I find myself stuck. Now, if you were me, Hannah the baby mastodon, what would you do? 911. Panic. Call 911. No cell phones. Scream. <laughs> Mom. <laughs> Anything more? Call for help. Scream. Struggle. Exactly. Yes. So I'm making all this ruckus, and Tessa hears this ruckus. And she sees not a cute baby mastodon. She sees like a big juicy hamburger nailed to the ground. So Tessa's coming in after me, and she's going to attack. You can attack me. However you want. Perfect. Oh no! Oh no! Baby Mastodon is getting eaten by this amazing saber-toothed cat, and uh, but then the saber-toothed cat finds itself stuck as well. Uh, she can't get out, and so we have two animals trapped. I've died. It's over. Thank you. It was a good life. <laughs> Tessa, thank you so much. You are also stuck and about to decompose. But all of this, this whole scenario kind of tells you uh, like what was happening. So this, the scene of death attracts more predators. So maybe a pack of dire wolves. Dire wolves travel in about 30, you know, like a pack of 30 or so, which is just incredible to think about. But again, they're seeing an easy meal. Um, and other things like scavengers such as coyotes or mountain lions would also be attracted to the scene here. And uh, maybe not all of these animals would get stuck at one time, but some would eventually. Other things get blown over the top of the seep as we see in front of us. You know, we see some leaves and trash and stuff, but insects would be kind of caught in this whole jumble of, you know, decomposition. They're a big part of that. Birds coming down, Vultures. scavenging birds. <laughs> Well, vultures. Vultures, yeah. exactly. Big Territorans at the time. Yeah. Um, all of these animals were, were finding their way into these kind of scenarios here. Now, in, this is entrapment. That's what was happening here at the tar pits. And I don't know what I did with my slides. There they are. So a pit starts off, a seep, I should say, starts off pretty shallow. You know, not too deep. Those animals get stuck on the top and they decompose over time. And something called sedimentation, or yeah, sedimentation come, <laughs> comes around and that is just uh, water washing down from the mountains and a layer of ground is laid down over the asphalt there. But the asphalt continues to seep and that pit over time gets deeper and deeper. Now I said that the fossils in these pits here have been dated from about uh, 40,000 years to 15,000 years. So that's quite a long period of time. But this pit is staying open for that entire time. 
other pits can sometimes get blocked off, like this, the illustration here of this small one on the side. Um, it just got covered and it stopped seeping, uh, and so that happens. But over time, we see animals getting stuck, you know, in the same seep over and over again. And we see something like this occur. So this is a pretty deep fossil deposit here. And they take on these conical forms, so these conical shapes, just because of the way the asphalt seeps. It starts off as a small, small seep, and then it grows larger and larger as it continues to be fed by asphalt or oil coming up from underground. And animals might only get stuck once every 10 years, but that would account for the number of fossils that we find here in, in, the, in the tar pits. Um, so, you know, these entrapment sad scenarios are only happening once every 10 years, but still that, that gives us, that yields over 5.5 million fossils and counting. Um, and so in the ground, what these look like is this, which is what we'll be seeing a little bit later. So this is a, a vent deposit, which is just a, a regular deposit there. And that's kind of what it looks like in the ground. Very distinct edges and very different from the surrounding matrix. I can pass these around if you want to see any of these later too. Feel free to come on up. Um, when we're done. Um, so this is how so many animals got stuck here and why we also call it a carnivore trap. So Tessa was my, my one saber-toothed cat, but all those dire wolves are coming to eat, all those other scavengers are coming to eat. So the ratio of carnivores to herbivores is about nine carnivores to every one herbivore found wow. in the fossil record That's here, wow. which in nature is obviously not, not normal, not sustainable. Usually in nature we find about 14 herbivores sustaining one carnivore. <laughs> Um, and so this is really wow. flipped on its head here, but we get the idea of what was happening thanks to just the number of carnivores we find, number of predators and scavengers we find, and that really tells us about these kind of larger pre predator-prey relationships that were happening during the Ice Age, which is just amazing that we have this window into the L LA's Ice Age past. This is crazy. That's my theme. You'll hear that a lot more. Any questions? Yeah. The uh, source of the asphalt that's coming up from below? It's the, it's the Salt Lake oil field. Salt Lake. Okay, missed that. It's oil underneath our feet. And the source of that? Just marine life, dead marine life when we were once underwater here in California. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Cool. Well, that was fun. We're going to head on over to Project 23, which is our last stop. Yeah. Maybe there were more carnivores in the past? Not necessarily. It's just the things that got stuck in the asphalt here. So we see herbivores getting stuck kind of at random, you know, not on purpose. We don't think that they were especially stupid. <laughs> it was just happening uh, over time. And uh, as those animals would get stuck, the predators uh, were really attracted to that scene, that easy meal. And so, exactly. So the record uh, really reflects maybe not what was stuck around, but, uh, but kind of this inverted ratio because of that scenario that was happening. Yeah. Yeah. We're not digging in the ground. That's a really great question. Um, there's too much. <laughs> we have like so much fossil material on our hands, it's crazy. We are digging, we're dealing with salvage excavations right now. So things like whenever any construction happens around here, there are most likely fossils upturned in that process. And so things like the, there's a metro extension coming through on Wilshire here. This is Wilshire Street right up here. So they're finding fossils there, which are sent to us because they're partially preserved in asphalt. They may be partially mineralized, which is just a, a different way of things fossilizing. Um, but they'll be sent to us because they're Ice Age specific and they're found in this area. Um, but we're going to talk about just the major kind of construction that happened around here that yielded our current excavations. We're not digging in the ground right now. There's one seat that's still open from 1915, and that's pit 91, which is right across the way there. And that's actually liquid asphalt, so a little bit different. Last question. We got to move on. Yeah. What is the mosquito netting over there? Oh, thanks for asking. So this is work done by natural, the Natural History Museum. That's called the malaise trap. It's a passive insect trap. Um, so insects fly into the middle. It's, it's mimicked after a tent. Um, and so they fly into the middle and their first instinct is to fly up. So they get caught in that triangular part and they actually get stuck and in, funneled into a jar of ethanol. Those insects are sorted um, every week at the Natural History Museum. We set up these malaise traps in people's backyards and identified 40 new types of flies here in LA, which is really exciting. Um, and so they're doing it here to compare insects that we find today at the tar pits with insects we find in the fossil record at the tar pits. So that's what we're doing with that one. All right, we are gonna walk on over this way.